So here's a video on the practice quiz, 2.5 slash 2.6, but pre 2.6. Um, 2.6 is all about uh, piecewise functions, and today we're only looking at pieces of functions and their conditions, which ultimately will prepare us for next week piecewise functions. Let's begin with number one. On this question, they are asking for the range, and the range are the y values, y values. So if you think about this graph, it does not exist at the y value of five, right? It doesn't actually get to five. I mean, if it were extended, it would, but it doesn't actually get to five. Where does it start existing at the y value of four, right? This coordinate is negative two, four, has a y value of four. I mean, it's an open dot, so you can't include it, but it does start here and it goes down forever. So in terms of up and down, because the range are your y values and y values are up and down, in terms of up and down, it starts existing right here at the y value of four and below, okay? At the y value of four and below. So again, this is the highest uh, location of this piece of the line, and it does go down forever, so it does have all the y values. So in other words, it will exist at negative 10, but where is it gonna exist? Way over here somewhere off the graph. So what our range is, is y is less than four. Okay, now it cannot be less than or equal to because that's not a solid dot. If it were a solid dot, then you'd pick less than or equal to. Moving on to number two. State the function and its condition. Okay, so right here we really do. It's the same piece of the line, but they want us to state the actual line that, that this piece belongs to. All right, so we first need to identify the slope and the y-intercept of the entire line, not just the piece, right? So we may have to extend it. In this case, we do. Um, we see that the slope from left to right, it really does go up one and over two. So the slope is one over two. And that's a very important bit of information. Now, if I continued to go up one over two, I'd end up right there if I were to extend it, right? So this part of the line doesn't exist, but I extended it just for a little while so we could see that the slope gets us to this y-intercept value. And that would be the b value of four, no, five. The b value of five. So now that we know our slope and our y-intercept, um, we could write our slope-intercept form equation. Y equals mx plus b, which is one half x plus five. Okay, and that is the function. Now we need to state its condition. I just deleted this part of the line so we could go back to the original piece of the line. So obviously it doesn't exist over here. I just deleted it. It starts existing. Now remember the condition, we want to state the condition as the domain. So the condition is really asking for the domain, right? So we're going to say this is the function and we're going to say if, this is the condition part, if the x's are where, obviously this graph doesn't exist at the x value of zero. Here's the x value of zero, it doesn't exist here. It doesn't exist anywhere in the positives. It does not even exist at the x value of negative one. Look, up here it doesn't reach it, right? It doesn't reach it. So it starts existing at the x value of negative two. And it does exist at negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. It does exist from negative two this way forever. Now it is an open dot, so we're not gonna include the negative two, but how do you say that x is less than negative two, that's exactly what you write, that x is less than negative two. So the condition is your, your function is y equals one half x plus five if x is less than negative two. And if you look for your answers, you'll see that this one is the correct answer right there, okay? Moving on, state the range. Again, the range are your y values up and down. So does this exist up and down forever. If it did, you would say y equals all real numbers. Um, obviously, it doesn't. It, it looks like this is the beginning point, which is an open dot, and it's going up, so it's above this y value of negative two. Okay, that's a y value of negative two. And it looks like the range will be, um, actually, all you have to type in, because this is a type in your answer, all you have to do is say y is greater than that negative two value, okay? Moving on. All right, numero cuatro. State the range. What is the range? The range are your y values, and that means look at how, if it goes up and down, you wanna state where it's at in terms of up and down. 
So if it had arrows, it would go up and down forever if it had arrows. If it had arrows, I would say my range is y equals all real numbers because it would continue up forever, it would continue down forever. However, it doesn't continue up forever or down forever. It has no arrows. That means that this is an endpoint that's an open dot. This is a solid dot endpoint. That means that, that these values are, are the y values, right? Um, so what is this y value? It's negative one. What is this y value? It's negative four. Let's put some dots just so we could clearly see negative one and negative four. Now, how do we write um, segments as the range or domain, you got to write a compound inequality, all right? Because it is between the y value of negative one and between the y value of negative four, right? This whole thing is between the negative one and the negative four, okay? Right? So what do we do? We put the y in between those two numbers. Now, this could be a little tricky. We put the y in the middle. Now, remember this, guys. We have to put the smaller number on the left side and the greater, the greater number on the right side. So which one, you gotta think about it, which one's a smaller number? Is it negative one or, or negative four? It's actually negative four, the smaller number, okay? The greater number happens to be negative one. And of course, when you put the smaller on the left and the greater on the right, you will always be able to write the less than symbols because it always has to open up towards the greater number that's on the right. I hope you remember that. It's pretty easy once you practice it over and over and over and over. Anyway, um, one final detail. This is an open dot at the negative one, solid dot at the negative four. So at the negative one, it has to be open, which means you cannot have a solid line underneath it. At the negative four, it's a solid dot, which means it has to have a solid line underneath it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the range right there, which is, uh, let's see which one it is. Apparently that one right there. Moving on. State the function and its condition. All right, so we need to state the y equals mx plus b equation and its condition, which is really talking about the domain, right? So we need to look at this thing, identify the slope, identify the y-intercept. But in order to do that, you got to imagine that it were a continuous line. Okay, now the slope you could clearly see um, from here to here, it's going down one, two, three, over one, two. So it's going down three, that's negative three, run two. So the slope is negative three over two. That is very important information right there. Now, where is the B value? And you're thinking, well, it doesn't cross, it stops right here. Yeah, but what if you were to extend the line? You need to extend the line just so you could find this missing B value. Okay, um, so how do we do that? We need to continue with the slope of down one, two, three, over one, two, down one, two, three, over one, two. So I guess you could just do another one and another one that way so you could see that it, it does go down one, two, three, over one, two, and then go down one, two, three, and then over one, two. So you'd be at this location which is uh, the location one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative seven. I hope this makes sense. So now you know the M, now you know the B, now you could write your slope intercept form equation, Y equals negative three halves X minus seven. Now that is the equation that would produce this line with arrows, right? But we don't have a line with arrows, uh, so we need to give it a condition. What is the condition? You're gonna put if, and you, then you gotta state your domain. Now, what is your domain? The domain are your x values, okay? So let's take a look at this x number line. Where is this graph at? Is it over here at one, at two, at three? Heck no, it's over here on the negative side. And let's be specific, where on the negative side is it? It is between this value, x value of negative four, and this x value of negative two. So stating the condition is pretty easy because we know we're talking about x's, so you're gonna put x in the middle, you're gonna put the smaller number on the left side, the bigger number on the right side. So we are talking about the number negative four and negative two. So let's do that. We're gonna put a negative four, a negative two, x is in between it, less than symbols. Which one's a solid dot? This one down here is a solid dot, um, which is on the x value of negative two. So the inequality with the negative two has to have a solid line underneath it. So this is your entire answer, the function with its condition. So let's find the function 
and it looks like this one is the good function um, and we look at that condition that's also true so this is your answer moving on state the range type in your answer with no spaces between your term all right again range are your y values as you could see here's the y value of four right i mean that's how high this red piece of line goes it doesn't go to five it doesn't go to six it just stays at four and below so how do we say uh, below the value of four because it's not even at four it's an open dot so it's just below four okay so how do we say that it's simply y is less than four this is your range and that's what you need to type in type it in without spaces between your terms okay moving on state the function and its condition again to state the function in y equals mx plus b form you need to know the m you need to know the b the m is pretty clear from here to this open dot you're going up one and you're going over two so the slope is one over two and the b value if you use that slope backwards to this way down one to this way down one that will be your b value which is the value of two so your function is y equals one half x plus two and then you say if and now you got to state your domain because it says state its condition which is a domain okay now what is a domain again we're talking about the x values all right does this graph exist over here it actually does because the arrow continues this way forever okay the line continues this way forever that's what's signified by the arrow does it exist at three yes at four well it, it exists at less than four it's an open dot at four it doesn't exist at five or at six or at seven or at eight in terms of x it's at four below right so how do we say that it's below four you're going to write down your x value has to be below four that's your domain okay there's your answer y equals one half x plus two uh, if x is less than four which is that one right there it's kind of weird that all of them have been that first option who knows? Um, that's definitely not going to happen on your quiz. It's going to get mixed up. So um, let's continue. State the domain. All right. The domain are your x values. Remember, domain are your x values. So right here, it doesn't exist anywhere in the negatives, anywhere in the positives, not even here. The only place that exists is at x equals 2. And that's the actual e equation, x equals 2. So the domain, you would just type in x equals 2. That's the only place that this vertical line exists, right? state the range all right the range are your y values the up and down so does this go up forever yes does it go down forever yes so in terms of y we're talking about y equals all real numbers so this is your answer right here y equals all real numbers definitely not x just y equals all real numbers the range are your y values state the range oh this one's interesting the range again are your y values okay and does this exist up here at three at four at five or at one or at zero at negative one no the only y value that this segment exists at is at the y value of two so that's what you would say y equals two right now if it were like here going up forever then you would say uh, y is greater than or equal to two or if it were here going down this way forever you would say y is less than or equal to two right um, but it's just at the y value of two it doesn't go up doesn't go down let's move on number 11 state the correct function with its condition so once again for a function in y equals mx plus b you need an m you need a b as you could see the slope from that open dot to the other solid dots going down one unit and going over two units so the slope is down one over two because after all uh, going down is a negative rise so it's negative one half the b value what is the b value well you can't see it yet but you if you go down with the pattern of down one over two down one over two it would cross right there at negative five so I'm not even gonna draw the extension I already just went with the slope and I saw that the b value would be at negative five um, anyway um, you could draw it especially because this arrow does mean that it continues that way forever okay so what's our equation going to be our function is y equals and by the way you could label it f of x if you want or g of x or h of x um, i'm just labeling them y y equals negative one half x minus five now the condition if and again we want the domain if what if your x values are 
x values run left and right. Does this graph go to the left forever, or does it go to the right forever, or both left and right from this x value of negative 4? It goes to the right, which means greater than. So this is saying x is greater than negative 4, right? I'm just going to put a little mark right here at the x value of negative 4. We know that this graph starts at that x value of negative 4, and it goes to the right, which means greater than. And it is an open dot, so just a greater than symbol, negative 4. That is your answer. If we look for that answer, it is over here. Moving on. State the domain. This is a good one. State the domain. The domain, again, are your x values. Okay, now uh, I can't even spell x values. Okay, um, the domain are your x values. That means left and right. So does this go to the left forever and to the right forever? No, it's between here and here. So you know you're going to put your x between here and here. What are those values? That's the value of negative 2, the smaller number on the left side, the value of 3, the bigger number on the right side. And of course, you always put less than symbols. And whichever one has a solid dot, you have to put a solid line underneath that inequality. Obviously, the solid dot's at negative 2, so you put a solid line underneath the inequality where negative 2 is at. And that is your answer, which is right there. Moving on. St state the correct range. Again, man, it's a lot of these questions are really easy, though. I hope you guys could appreciate that on the quiz. Uh, range are your y values, and this is going down from this value of negative 3, right? That's the y value of negative 3 and below. That's where this graph is at. So how do you say that, that it has to be below the y value of negative 3? You're going to say less than negative 3. You might be wondering, why didn't you put an or equal to? That's not a solid dot. Remember, open dots, no solid line underneath it. Solid dot, then you do put a solid line underneath it. But that's your range. Y is less than negative 3. Type it in with no spaces between your answers. Moving on. Uh, state the function and its condition. Once again, for a function, you need an m, and you also need a b. So the m, what is the m? You're rising 1, running 2. OK, so let's put that positive 1 over 2. And the b, well, if you know that your slope is up 1 over 2, use that pattern backwards to see where it would cross the y-axis. So go over 2 this way, down 1 over to this way, down one. You could clearly see that it would cross right here at three. So we're going to say that the b value is three. Okay. If you wanted to draw it, that's fine. Um, but you, you already know that the b value is three. So our function is y equals one half x plus three. What is the condition? Uh, again, the condition is the domain. And the domain, in terms of left and right, does this go to the left forever and to the right forever? No, it's between two x values, between the x value of 2 and it's between the x value of 4. So 2 and 4. Again, smaller number on the right side. So we're going to say if, you have to say if, this is your condition, uh, put the number 2, put the number 4, and put the x between the 2 and the 4. Now notice both of these are open dots, so we're just going to put less than symbols no or equal to's. And this is your function with its condition, which is the first one right here. Moving on, almost done. State the domain and range of the above. Again, the domain are your x values. Okay, so as you could, as you know, x values run left and right. This does go to the left forever. It doesn't go to the right forever. It stops right here at the value of 3, which is a solid dot. So where is it at? It's at 3 and to the left. So that to the left is less. So it's at 3 to the left, which is less. So you're going to say x is less than or equal to 3. That's your domain. How about your range? Your range are your y values. Okay. So uh, what is this max height right there? What's the y value right there? That's the max height of 2. So your y is at 2 or less. y is at 2 or less. So you're going to say less than or equal to 2. Once again, these were solid dots. That's why we have solid line underneath, solid lines underneath those inequalities. So that is the correct answer. x is less than or equal to negative 3. The y for the range is less than or equal to 2. Did I say negative 3? I meant positive 3. Anyway, here's your answer. Boom. Moving on. State the function and its condition. This is pretty simple. Uh, the slope. Whoops, I don't want a highlighter. The slope 
is up one over three. I hope we could all see that. And it's so obvious that it does cross at the y value of one. Our function is y equals one third x plus one. The condition you write if, and it, we need the domain now, so x is what? Does it go in both directions forever? No, it starts at this solid dot of the x value of three and it goes to the left. And to the left is less than, so less than three. And we're gonna put an or equal to because after all this is a solid dot. So y equals one third x plus one. Um, and when we're looking at these one third x plus one, none of them are there, right? So this answer, weirdly enough, is none of these are correct. Almost done. Number 18, I'm sorry, 17, I <laughs> got ahead of myself. All right, this goes to that worksheet that we did. And um, this is a pretty simple question. I'm saying of the following points, and not all the points, whoops, not all the points. I'm talking about just the specific points I give you, A, B, C, and D. Out of those four points, which two points would give you the best line that fits, all right? Um, so how do we do that? You would take your pencil. I'm going to take a, an actual line here. So I want to make a line. And I'm going to take, whoops, I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to start running it through the options they give us. The first option is A, B. That would be the absolute worst line of best fits, right? A, B, that's horrible, right? You want the line that best fits these dots. Um, let's go to the next option right below it, A, C. A, C, that's, that's better, but it's definitely not good. Um, how about C, D? Well, if we go to C, D, that's not so good either, right? And then we go to these ones over here, B, C. Let's go to B, C. Whoops. B, C. That's not bad, but it does have all the dots above the blue line. And the, op the final option, B and D. B and D, you know what? B and D, out of all the options they gave us, B and D is the best one. It looks like A is pretty close. These dots are pretty close. These dots are pretty close. I think B and D is the best option. And it should be clear to you guys that B and D is the best option of all those. So I know you guys don't have this uh, magical blue line floating around, right? But you guys could just get your pencil and put it up on the screen and try. Okay, A, B, that's horrible. B, C, all the lines are, a dot, are above, or all the dots are above. Uh, a, D, uh, all the dots are below. Uh, C, D, and yeah, B, D is the only one that has or that best fits this, gra this graph, this data. Moving on, same uh, dots here, but they want us to just describe, do you have positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation? Remember, correlation is kind of like slope, and we know that this from left to right does have a positive correlation. No correlation would mean that the dots are all over the place. You can't even see any type of line that would fit it, right? That they'd be all over the place. Negative correlation would be like a negative slope where dots are up here and they start going down this way. Undefined correlation, I just made that up. There's no such thing as undefined correlation. So don't pick that one. And now for the last one, um, it says type in the equation of the line that best fits in slope intercept form. This is the one that requires the most work. Um, they want you to use point B, which is 215, right? Um, that way there are no questions like somebody might say, oh, that's, that's uh, 214, right? Between 12 and 18 is 14, or 216. No, I'm letting you know that it's 215. And it says for you to type in the equation of the line that best fits in slope intercept form, okay? And y equals mx plus b form. So we already did this. Uh, we found the best, whoops, give me one second. We found um, the best uh, line, and we did go through the point B and D. So if they're telling you to use B, obviously you're not going to pick B and A. You're not going to pick B and C. It's going to be B and D that would work best. So we need an equation in y equals mx plus b form that'll represent this uh, blue line. Okay. So how do we do that? Well. We need to use some coordinates, and they already gave us the first coordinate of B that they want us to use, which is 2, 15, okay? And let's go for the coordinate of D right here, and that coordinate is 8 on the X and 36 on the Y. 8 on the X, 36 on the Y. So the other point is 8, 36. 
So what could we do with two points? We could label them x and y. This is your first point, this is your second point, and we could use the slope formula. After all, to write an equation in y equals mx plus b, you need a slope and you need a y-intercept. Now, we don't want to rely on this uh, y-intercept of 7 or 8. I mean, it might be 7 or 8, um, but what we want to do is specifically find that b value using algebra. So right now, let's use the slope formula. Again, when you use the slope formula, please uh, rewrite your division bar and your subtractions and then safely plug in your values 36, 15, 8, and 2. Okay, and 36 take away 15 is, I believe, 18, and 8 take away 2 is 6, and this works out beautifully, doesn't it? Because um, 18 divided by 6 is 3, so we know that our m value is 3. That is awesome. Now, if we had our specific b value, I don't want to guess. I don't want to say that it's 7 or that it's uh, 8. I want to be, be absolutely sure that I have the right b value. So since I, I'm not absolutely sure here, I'm going to take a point and a slope and write it in point-slope form. And point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. And when I use point-slope form, I always rewrite it with blank spots. y minus blank spot equals blank spot uh, times parentheses x minus blank spot. And now I plug in safely my values of x1, y1. So my x value is 2, my y1 value is 15, and my m, we just found out using the slope formula, is 3. So we're almost done. All we need to do is distribute, right? 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down y minus 15. Final step would be to add 15, add 15. So this ends up equaling uh, y um, equals 3x. What is negative 6 plus 15? That is 9. So on this one, you have to type in your answer, type it in with no spaces between your terms, and that is the equation of this line that best fits. Uh, you know, I probably should have asked an additional question like, um, what would your output be for the given input of 10, right? If you actually went out to 10, where would it be at? That would be 10 times 3, that would be plus 9, 39. So the input 10 would give you the output 39. Anyway, it's been a long video. I'm done. This is what the quiz is going to be like tomorrow. Please study.